goodies from the garden. Blessing from the Lord. Zucchini, squash, tomatoes, peppers, bell peppers and jalapeno peppers. We're gonna put this to good use. Join me as we get busy prepping for Father's Day. For breakfast, we're gonna have breakfast sliders. We're gonna prepare it ahead of time. Of course, put it in the fridge. So all we have to do is take it out of the fridge early in the morning, heat it up before church, and we'll have a wonderful breakfast. A savory breakfast because the men like savory stuff. All right, then we're gonna go to church and then we're gonna come home and we are gonna have a wonderful pizza bake, which again, we're gonna prep and make ahead. So all we have to do is put it under the broiler and heat it up. We're gonna have that with some fresh corn on the cob cooked in the crock pot. We're also gonna make a delicious glaze to go in some of that watermelon that I picked up at the sprout sale. I still have some, so we're gonna use that and put a wonderful glaze on it. So we'll have the watermelon in place of salad. We'll have pizza bake. We'll have fresh corn on the cob. And then for breakfast, we're gonna have breakfast sliders. And then for dessert, we are gonna have Mama's old fashioned lemon pie. And you guys, the best part about today is we are gonna announce our Father's Day giveaway. So stay tuned. So join me, let's get busy cooking. We are gonna make the pizza bake in this Crofton 3.4 quart cast iron brazier. Instead of a traditional crust, we are gonna use zucchini because we have so much of it in the garden. So this is another recipe that's extremely easy and fun for kids to make. So for this crust, I used three large zucchini. Here's just the extra three that I had. I didn't know how many I was gonna use. I ended up using three. And what I did was I went ahead and I shredded the zucchini and I let it sit without adding any salt or anything. I just let it sit for about 30 minutes. You can let it sit for as little as 10 minutes all the way up to an hour. This is just how I chose to do it today. But I let it sit in this spinner, the one that I had picked up on clearance at Home Goods. But I let the shredded zucchini sit in here and every five minutes or so I'd spin it. And as I spin it, I collected all the juice. This is two cups of zucchini juice that I collected in 30 minutes time. You can collect as much or as little as you want. The more water you wring out of this, the crispier it will be, the more it will be like a traditional pizza crust. The less you wring out, the more it will be like a casserole. It's completely up to you. I'm just showing you the way I'm doing it today. Every five minutes or so, I would spin it and then I would take the liquid that I collected at the bottom and I'd add it to this cup. Zucchini juice is really good. It's filled with all kinds of wonderful nutrients and vitamins and it has a very mild taste. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and add it to my smoothie in the morning and that's what I'm gonna do with that. Now that this has been wrong, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. This is just a large microfiber towel that I use in the kitchen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the zucchini shreds. And this is, like I said, three large zucchini. It's probably three and a half to five cups. You, it really doesn't matter how much you use. It's whatever you have, however thick you want it. But this is just shredded zucchini. I'm just gonna roll it up like this. And then we're gonna see if we can extract more liquid just squeezing it it's pretty dry it's drier than than it is sometimes sometimes you could actually literally ring liquid see there we go the more you squeeze you see the wet spots all right I mean as you can see there still is some moisture for the most part I'm satisfied with how much moisture I've gotten out you could get another rag and do it again however many times you wanted to, or you could let it sit longer, depending on how much time you have. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the bowl. This is one of the reasons why I like using microfiber. It comes off pretty clean, pretty easily. You can see how wet it was. All right, 
This is what it looks like now. I went ahead and put the oven preheating to 400 degrees. I am gonna put just a little bit of oil. I'm using a Tuscan herb infused olive oil. You can use any kind of oil. And I am just going to use this baster. You could drizzle. In fact, I'll go ahead and do it just to show you. Very small amount of oil in the zucchini if you wanted to. It's not necessary. I am gonna add probably about a third of a cup of dried onions. It's kind of the same concept as what I did in the Mother's Day video with the hash brown casserole. This is dehydrated onions. So if there is too much extra moisture in the zucchini, the onions are going to help soak up that moisture so it won't be so soggy. Because I'm baking it today, but then we're not eating it until Father's Day, I went ahead and added the onions because number one, it's great flavor. Number two, it will help absorb that extra moisture. I'm also going to add garlic. This is granulated garlic. It's not garlic salt. Again, it's personal preference because we like the taste. I am going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. This is a neat little pepper grinder that was gifted to me for Christmas. And I really like the convenience of flipping it upside down. I will link it down below if you're interested. A little bit of Himalayan pink sea salt. Now I have my favorite food safety gloves on. I love it for convenience and I'm doing this one-handed. And I'm going to mix this together just so the onions can be incorporated really well before we start adding cheese. This smells so good already. We are making use of all this wonderful fresh produce that the Lord has provided that we are growing in the garden. To this, I'm going to add cheese and then a binding agent and I'm going to use eggs. You can use one egg, but I'm going to use two. This is just two large eggs. And to that, I'm going to add cheese. When I make this, the most important thing is that I add some type of Parmesan. I have some shredded Parmesan, but not much. So I'm going to pour it in here, probably about a fourth of a cup or a third of a cup. The same amount of onions, that's how much fresh Parmesan I'm going to put. Now I have this organic Parmesan grated cheese. I'm only going to put just a couple of sprinkles of this. Now, I have some mozzarella cheese that just needs to be used up. And I ended up with probably about a fourth of a cup. So I'm going to sprinkle this cheese. Then I'm going to add more cheese. Not as much, but just because I want a little bit of color. And this is a Mexican cheese blend, so it has absolutely nothing to do with Italian or pizza. But I have this cheese and it needs to be used up. So this one is probably the least full. Okay, that's it. This is another fresh clean glove. These gloves are so inexpensive that you can use several and they still last you forever. Now I'm just going to start mixing this up with one hand. The kids can do this. Kids love to play with food. Now I'm just going to take it and transfer it to the pan. And you could just pour it in there. And then you just take your time and you let the kids pat it down and make a crust. It's been patted in really well. And we're going to put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. For the filling, I am going to brown this pound of ground beef. I took it out of the freezer about 30 minutes ago, but it's still frozen. The outside is not, but the inside is frozen solid. So I'm just going to cook it down frozen. This is a stained pot, but it's clean. You don't have to put any oil in here because there's enough fat in the ground beef. You can use Italian sausage, pork sausage, chicken sausage, turkey sausage, venison elk, bison, anything you want. We like ground beef on our pizza and I had gotten so many of these on clearance. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'll cut three sides. You're just going to put it in there and as it heats up, it will start to defrost and you could cook it as it defrosts. Let it fry a little bit before I'm going to flip it. You don't have to. You can start flipping it right away. The part that's stuck has just started cooking. Break this part off so it can cook on the other side. Works with any type of frozen brown meat. Now, if it's chicken or turkey and it doesn't have a lot of fat, it will stick to the bottom if you don't add oil. As soon as I'm finished scraping this side, flip it again, and you just scrape it off in layers. So this is some of my homemade Cajun seasoning, probably about two tablespoons. So as you can see. The meat is still not all the way defrosted, but I went ahead and I added one small onion 
a few red pepper, green pepper, and orange peppers from the freezer, and a half of a pack of organic mushrooms that I had picked up on clearance last week for 89 cents. We like onions, peppers, and mushrooms on our pizza, and we don't mind if they're big, so we're cooking it this way. If you have little ones that are picky eaters and don't like vegetables, chop them up so little and cook it down that they don't even know it's in there. I'm also going to add about eight little tomatoes fresh from the garden that were just cut up. Okay, this was 400 degrees for 25 minutes. I know I originally said I was going to keep it in there for 20, but I was busy seeing about this. It stayed in there a little bit longer and it still looks fantastic. All right, the ground meat has cooked all the way through and the vegetables are soft. Vegetables are not mush, they're kind of chunky. And that's because typically when we make homemade pizza, we'll put raw onion, raw peppers, raw mushrooms, and we'll bake it that way and we think it's delicious. I'm gonna do this a little bit opposite of what you typically do when you make pizza. As you can see, the crust on the sides is brown, but not burnt, and it did not stick. It will come up easily when you cut it. On the sides, it's thin, and then the bottom is a little bit thicker. Because we're not eating this today, I'm gonna put it together a little bit differently. I am gonna put some mozzarella cheese first. I'm gonna like make it backwards. Instead of putting sauce, and then meat, and then cheese, we're gonna put cheese, and then meat, and then sauce, and then a little more cheese. This is just gonna prevent the zucchini from getting some salt by the meat and the sauce and who doesn't love extra cheese anyway we're gonna put a layer of cheese shredded mozzarella cheese that I already had now we're just gonna spoon in this meat with all these delicious veggies now if you have little ones helping you do this then you need to let it cool before you let them put this together now that I have filled the top with all the meat and everything's still hot I'm gonna go ahead and put some sauce I'm gonna use some organic marinara from Aldi that I got for a dollar 85 which is cheaper than the non-organic it just blows my mind anyway I picked this up a long time ago I already had it but I, I opened it and I used it a few days ago for something else and this is what I have left. It's less than a half a jar and I'm gonna go ahead and use this just because I want to get rid of it. You can make your own pasta sauce. If I didn't have this I would have probably made my own with fresh tomatoes from the garden that I have right now. But you can use tomato paste and add seasonings or tomato sauce. This is what it looks like after I've put the sauce. Now I'm just gonna top it with some more mozzarella cheese. And again, I'm just cleaning out the fridge. Some leftover pepperoni that needs to be used up so it's gonna work out perfect. If you don't have this, it's fine. There's so much other protein in there. But if you like pizza with everything on it and you have it, then why not? We're putting what we like on our pizza. All right, now this is gonna go back in the oven for another 20 minutes. So I just pulled the pizza bake out of the oven. This time I baked it at 350 for 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna let it cool completely before putting it in the fridge. Now we're gonna get the corn prepped in the crock pot. I'm using four fresh ears of corn. All I did was shuck them. Still no fudges, I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna put the four ears of corn in. This is a small crock pot, three fit well. I'm gonna go ahead and break this one up. So that way there's some variation in the sizes. I'm gonna add one cup of milk. Pepper, salt, and butter. And this is my little butter bell my sweet daughter-in-law gave me. So all I did was take the softened butter and put a little bit on each corn. It's gonna go ahead and go in the fridge like this. I'm using only milk. This happens to be 2% milk. All right, we're making Mama's Old Fashioned Lemon Pie. Today, I'm using lemon cream cookies for the crust, mostly because I picked this up at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. It was cheaper. If I would have got graham crackers or vanilla wafers, the cheapest I saw was $2 or two fifty dollars a box. So this was half the price. You could use any type of cookie base that you want. I'm using the lemon cream cookies from the Dollar Tree, $1.25. I went ahead and crushed them up. Kids love to do this. This was a one pound package and I could have used the whole thing. I originally saved these thinking I might use them to decorate the top of the cake and I may still do that. Uh, you could leave one out for each of the kids just to have a cookie to snack on while they make this or you could put them all in here and just use the whole pound. 
to this. We're gonna add a fourth of a cup or a third of a cup, whatever you want. And we're just gonna add sugar, pinch of salt, and butter. I'm using one stick of butter. I'm gonna take a few drops that's left and I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the pan. And just start mixing it up. I'm gonna use my fingers. Use those few drops of butter to coat the bottom of the pan. This is a deep dish pan. There's still little chunks of cookies. You could use your pen to make sure they're all gone if you care about that. I think it's just great. As is, bake this in the oven for 10 minutes at 350. Or you can put it in the freezer. While you make the filling, I'm gonna go ahead and bake it. This is the same bowl that I just made the crust in. Instead of washing it, I'm just gonna use a dry dish rag and wipe it out. This is very simple. Six fresh eggs. I separated them. If you wanted to make a meringue, you could use the egg whites for that. Sometimes I do do that, but today I'm going to add the egg whites to the other eggs that I make for our breakfast slider. So I'm going to go ahead and put that aside. I am, however, going to use the six egg yolks. We're baking the crust, but we are not going to bake the pie. It does have raw egg yolks. However, I learned from Mama that this lemon juice will cook the egg yolks. I'm pouring the lemon juice just to get all of this egg yolk out of the bowl. Kids love to squeeze the lemons. Seven lemons, a cup and a third of lemon juice, six egg yolks. But as you can see, the acid in the lemon juice is already starting to curdle and cook those egg yolks. <laughs> I mix that up just for a few seconds. Now I'm gonna add two cans of sweetened condensed milk. I'm using organic, it's what I had in the pantry, but you use whatever you have. Here's the second can. I used a spoon and emptied the cans. I did not mix it yet, the timer just went off. And we are gonna let this cool. I wasn't planning on baking it, but let's see. <laughs> I think I decided I'm gonna cook this one. See, let's pour it in. We're gonna put it back in the oven and we are gonna bake it for 15 minutes. I'm gonna take the rest of these cookies. I'm gonna go ahead and crush them and then I'm gonna put that on the top. This is what the lemon pie looks like if you do bake it. It's not like a fully cooked pie. It is not firm or set in the middle. It's gonna go in the refrigerator for a couple days. The reason I decided to cook it this time is because I cooked the crust. And because I cooked the crust, I would have had to wait for it to cool completely if I would have wanted to put the cold filling inside. This way, I was able to put the filling inside, heat it up together for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Now I'm gonna let it cool completely. This evening I will put it in the fridge and it'll sit in the fridge for a couple days and then I'll top it right before I decide to serve it and it'll be served cold. Scrambling the eggs. I scramble eggs all kinds of different ways. When I'm gonna make something like this I try to make them kind of flat. This is the egg whites that we had left from the lemon pie and to that I'm gonna add more eggs. Okay, so this is six egg whites and three eggs and I just did six eggs. Nine eggs and six egg whites. Almost like an omelet. Now we're gonna make some breakfast sliders. I'm using some whole wheat rolls that I picked up from the bakery. They were $4.99. I got them on Claire's for $2.74. We're also using some Gouda that I picked up at Aldi for $1.89. And some Black Forest ham that I pulled out of the freezer and eggs from our hens. Do I wanna make them sweet or savory? Let me go ahead and cut this up. I'm gonna put this pan in the middle. And I'm just gonna, I, I used a serrated bread knife and I just sliced the tops. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it like that. And then, okay, so that's the bottom layer. And I'm gonna use this Duke's Real Mayo that I had picked up for a dollar at the discount store. The reason I'm using this one is because it's squeezable. This is really gonna be as easy as easy can be, just like that. Okay, and I'm just gonna take these slices of egg, shape it like a puzzle. These eggs are still hot. So I just opened this black forest ham. I'm not gonna use all this, it's too much. So this is what four slices of black forest ham looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and put another layer. So that's six 
and I'll put that in an eight. So now it has eight slices of ham, and then there's 10 slices of Gouda. Let me see how many I'm gonna put. Okay, so there was 10 slices of Gouda. I have one slice left. I used nine, and I just layered it like this. For my breakfast sliders, I just lightly drizzled the spicy Caribbean pesto olive oil on the top. You do not have to put that. I just did that just so it would have a little bit of those flavors. This is a half a stick of butter, and to that, I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. It's adding the things that we like. Spicy brown mustard, dried parsley. Gonna mix that up. And then I'm gonna brush it on the tops of the bread. You can use any kind of rolls. I picked these up because they were on clearance in the bakery and there's no GMOs. It was made with fresh, real ingredients. The bread that you buy in the bakery at the store is so much better for you than the stuff that they add all those additives to. Mix up what's left and just pour it on top. You can top with poppy seeds, chia seeds. I'm using basil seeds because they're so healthy and they don't rise up like chia seeds. I will link them down below. Amazon is the only place I've ever been able to find them. One of the most healthiest superfoods and I eat them in place of chia seeds. This is what they look like up close. You can use them in place of poppy seeds or chia seeds. I put them in yogurt, oatmeal, smoothies. Put them on all kinds of stuff. As you can see, I'm putting them on our breakfast sliders. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with foil and we will bake it for 20 minutes tonight and then heat it up in the oven for five minutes when we're ready to eat it. I just pulled the breakfast sliders out of the oven. They've been in the oven for 20 minutes. If you take the foil off, this is what they look like. I'm gonna go ahead and put this foil back on and let them cool. I'm gonna bake them another five or 10 minutes when we're ready to eat them that morning, but I will take the foil off. Hey guys, it's time. Okay, I'm a Cajun cook. Cajuns love cast iron pans. I had to put all of the entries into a cast iron pot. It just made sense. This is so much better than a bowl to me. I had so much fun writing down all the comments, putting them in here. I know I've had people ask, uh, just use YouTube random selector or uh, a couple of other questions like um, could I do PayPal or cash? Sorry, no PayPal or cash this time. And I personally chose to do it this way, the old fashioned way, just because the channel is still small and I could. Now, as the channel grows and we continue to have giveaways, I probably will transition to the YouTube random selector. But for now, this was so much fun. The only thing is I wish I could pick them all. Like maybe one day the Lord will bless me and I can give a gift to everybody but for today there's going to be one father's day winner now a couple of things to remember if you're selected please contact me asap through email give me all of your information and you have to agree that you are gonna send me a photo of either you collecting the cord or you giving the cord to your father or you a photo of whatever you choose to purchase with the cord. We want everyone to share in your joy. So we want everyone to be able to go to the community page and see how you were blessed and share in your joy. I want to get this out to you ASAP so you will have it in time for Father's Day on their big day. So I can either send you the card or I can send you the code or I can purchase whatever gift you want with it and ship it straight to your father. However you want to do it, you need to let me know all the information of how, whichever way you prefer ASAP and respond to my email. All right, here we go. I'm so excited. I can hardly wait. Y'all ready? This is so much fun. All right, friends, here's my black pot with all the comments. The way I did this is I started at the beginning of the giveaway and as I would enter comments, I would write them on a piece of paper and then they got put in the bowl or the pot. As the pot got full, I had my husband kind of mix them up and I am gonna reach my hand in there and grab one. It's lifted high on the top of a fence, so I can't really see in there. So we're gonna go ahead and do it together with you. <laughs> See what I want. We'll go with this one. Let's see who's the lucky winner. Woohoo! Here we go. Let's look at it together. Diane D. 
My husband passed away 14 years ago. My father passed away last year. My son and my grandkids live with me. I will use the gift cord to help the kids get a gift for their father. All right, friends, this might not be the comment verbatim, word for word, because I just reworded it in my own words. It's Diane D. She had also made another comment. Those containers look interesting. I like salt with my melon. Why my father-in-law used to put pepper on his cantaloupe. I put both of her entries on the same paper. I did do that with some people who had more than one entry. So this is our winner, Diane D. Congratulations. Now I want to say we are going to have more giveaways. So you might be the one blessed next time. So I encourage you to be encouraged and share love with your father on this Father's Day. May everyone have a happy, blessed Father's Day. So I'm going to put them in the oven just like this for five or 10 minutes and I'll pull them out and show you what they look like when they're ready. All right, I just pulled it out of the oven. I'm going to go ahead and plate it up. You can see all the layers of the goodness, the ooey gooey cheese. It's really yummy. A hearty Father's Day breakfast, some yummy coffee. Let's give this a taste. This is so good. The basil seeds on the top just gives it the perfect crunch. The egg and the ham and the cheese and the bread taste homemade. Enjoy. When you pull the corn out of the refrigerator, the crock is going to be cold. It's okay. Just flip the lid. Still looks the same. And you're going to put it on low for four hours. And then when you get home from church, it will be ready. Pull this out of the freezer before you go to church and just let it rest on the counter. After you get home and you remove the foil, this is what it looks like. At this point, all we need to do is heat it up and we're going to put it under the broiler to maybe five, ten minutes. And then we're going to put some fresh basil on top to garnish. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven. Okay, guys, I just pulled it out of the broiler after five minutes. I have some fresh basil from the garden and I'm just going to layer the top with fresh basil. So the little pieces I just put like that. The bigger pieces, I'm going to use some scissors and just do some basil shreds. All right, this is our pizza bake with a zucchini crust. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna try to slice it like a pizza or if I'm just gonna scoop it out like a casserole. I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool while I pull the other stuff out of the fridge, the watermelon and the pie. Then I'll decide how I wanna plate this up. It's a piece of watermelon I had already. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the ends off and then I'm gonna slice it into some wedges and then I'm gonna make a drizzle with brown sugar, salt, lime juice, and then I'll put a little bit of mint on top. One teaspoon of brown sugar, a spoonful of salt, and lime juice, a little bit more. And that's the drizzle that we're gonna put on the watermelon. Okay, I just cut the ends off and then sliced it into wedges like this. Then we'll turn it around. Okay, here's the drizzle. You could also drizzle a balsamic glaze. I'm just gonna put mint to make it pretty and refreshing. This is how I stored the pie. I didn't want to put foil on it because I didn't want it, the top to stick to the foil. You can put some kind of cream if you want. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to use the rest of those crushed cookies. And then I have some fresh lemon balm from the garden. And I'm just going to put that in the middle. I still have a few in here. I didn't use them all. I, I think I might just save this and put this on top of some yogurt. Just take this little bit of lemon balm. Just place it on top. Really simple, just like that. I decided to put the watermelon on a white platter. This is it. Now we're gonna open up the corn with a fork. I decided to go ahead and cut it like a slice of pizza. This is what it looks like. The deep dish stuffed pizza with a piece of lovely, refreshing watermelon with the yummy salt and sugar and lime glaze with a little bit of mint. And just seemed like it's seasoned to perfection. 
Okay guys, here you have it. This is our Father's Day delicious meal for pennies. Okay, let's go ahead and taste it. Mmm, so yummy. I know you know what watermelon tastes like, but this glaze just is very refreshing. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut a slice. Here's a slice of Mama's old fashioned lemon pie. As you can see, this does not set up like a traditional pie. It's soft, gooey, and messy, and it's cold. Whether you bake it for 15 minutes or you don't, you still serve it cold, and it doesn't set up very much either way. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Just like Mama's. This is so delicious. You can make this in as little as 10 minutes or five minutes if you use a store-bought crust and serve it. Put it in the refrigerator for a few hours and there you go. Or you can bake it. Originally, I was going to make some whipped cream. I was going to try this out. This is a gift that I got for Christmas from one of my sons and my daughter-in-law's. But I've never used it before and I didn't realize that's not included. Have any of you ever tried this? Anyway, so without any whipped cream, without anything, this has a wonderful lemon flavor to give you an idea of what it looks like on the spoon and the plate. It is fabulous. So if you make this or if your mama made this, did she bake it? Did she not bake it? Do you use eggs? Do you not use eggs? It's delicious every which way I've ever had it. Until next time. Bye.